Hello there. In today's video of environmental studies, we'll be looking at pollution and more so about one of the types of pollution that is air pollution. Now, this is a term we have been listening to since our school days. It essentially means the introduction of harmful materials into the environment and these harmful materials are called as pollutants. There is a very thin line of difference between pollutants and contaminants. Both of these cause pollution. Pollutants are substances which are present in the environment, but they are now causing a problem because now they are present in greater proportion than their natural abundance. For example, ozone is an example of a pollutant. On the other hand, contaminant is a substance that should not be normally present in the environment, but then it is released due to a certain chemical reaction. For example, the presence of oil in the sea is an example of a contaminant. Now, the pollutants can be either formed naturally like volcanic ash or they may be formed by human activities. In that case, we call it as a man-made pollutant. Pollution is though expected to be more in urban areas. It's not always the case. Sometimes from the urban areas, it can spread to the countryside and cause pollution there as well. So, it has been found that, you know, chemicals and pesticides are present in the Antarctic ice sheet. Now, though it is sourced from or generated from an urban area, it has spread to a non-inhabited area as well. So, these are the different types of pollution that is air, water, soil pollution also called as land pollution, noise pollution, thermal pollution and nuclear pollution. We look at each of these in detail. In this class, we will be looking at the first one that is air pollution. Now, air pollution is the presence of materials in air in such concentrations which are harmful to the man and man's environment. That is what you call as an air pollution. Now, what you see over here are different types of, you know, ways in which the air is getting polluted. So, you can see here that the smoke is getting released into the atmosphere or in this case, we are dusting the crop with some chemical fertilizers or pesticides. Or here, as you can see, this is a picture from the city of Shanghai in China where the smog of Shanghai, which is basically a mixture of pollution and um, the basically smoke and fog, is covering up the skyline itself. So, these are all examples of air pollution. And one thing to remember is among the several layers of atmosphere, it is the lower two layers, that is the troposphere and the stratosphere which are most associated with atmospheric pollution. So, troposphere is polluted due to smog or poisonous gases or fumes and stratosphere is mainly involved in pollution because this is where ozone depletion occurs which we will talk about in a bit later. Now, there are two types of air pollutants, primary and secondary. Primary air pollutants are those which are directly released from the source and they are retaining the same chemical form. For example, carbon monoxide or sulfur dioxide or suspended particulate matter which is abbreviated as SPM or any nitrogen oxides. All of these are primary air pollutants because they are released as such from the source. On the other hand, secondary air pollutants are subsequent air pollutants. That is, they are formed by, these secondary air pollutants are formed by the intermingling and reactions of the primary pollutants. This includes examples like photochemical smog or acid rain or PAN which stands for peroxyacetyl nitrate. All of these are formed by the reactions of the primary air pollutants. So, these are the two major categories of air pollutants and these are a few examples that I have shown you over here. Now, under each type of pollution, we will be looking at it and with three different headings or three subheadings, causes, effects and control. So, let us look at each one of these in detail. Now, the causes of air pollution, I told you, could be either natural or man-made. So, natural happens due to dust storms or when a lot of mold and pollen is being released from the plants or when there is a forest fire. So, the after effect of a forest fire again leads to air pollution. When ash is released from the volcanoes like I showed you in the earlier pictures as well. Or when cattle releases a lot of methane. All of these are examples of natural sources of pollution, natural causes of pollution. Man-made cause, major man-made cause of pollution is the burning of fuels. Basically, the coal or petrol or any other kind of petroleum derivatives when they are burnt in the form of motor vehicles or it could be in the form of industries or it could be for marine vessels or, you know, in some cases the wood, coal or oil are used in stoves, it is used in furnace, incinerator. All of these are examples where fuels are being burnt and that is why they are causing pollution. A lot of Toxic gases are being released into the atmosphere. Industrial activities like oil refineries or having a power plant or emissions from the industries like shown over here, smelting processes, these also release a lot of hydrocarbons, lead and other organic compounds into the atmosphere. 
Mining is another activity. Mining and construction is again uh, yet another activity which releases a lot of particulate matter. So small, tiny, solid particles are being released into the atmosphere. Crop waste burning, when there is a lot of crop waste that has that has fertilizers and pesticides in it, when that is burned, this gets converted into ammonia and gets released into the atmosphere. Even the waste in landfills is known to release a lot of methane by anaerobic digestion. So these are some of the man-made causes. Apart from these, in an indoor environment, fumes have been known to release from the paints, from varnishes, if there is an aerosol spray that is being used, solvents that are being used. These are also known to cause indoor air pollution. So these are some of the causes of air pollution. Now when we look at the effects, first let us look at the health effects in humans. So in human beings, the air pollution is known to cause a host of respiratory tract diseases like bronchitis, asthma, tuberculosis, pneumonia, etc. It causes cancer of the lung. So when we breathe in the tobacco smoke or if there is breathing in of hydrogen cyanide or sulfur dioxide, formaldehyde over a long period of time, that again leads to cancer, lung cancer mainly or other you know, respiratory tract gets affected. And in some cases we know the cancer can spread to other parts of the body as well. It can also lead to you know, malfunction of the nervous system. It can lead to mental impairment. There can be dizziness. So, these are mainly associated with carbon monoxide poisoning. So, there are different particles if present. For example, if lead is present in the atmosphere that we are breathing, in the toxic air that we are breathing, that is known to cause damage to our nervous system, even to the reproductive system and the kidney. So, there are different types of particles which are present that can affect various parts of our body. But, Generally, if we see, these are the three major effects on the respiratory tract. It causes cancer and it can affect our nervous system as well. What is shown over here is a map or a study. It's the, it was a survey that was done to show the deaths from air pollution per 100,000 inhabitants. And you can see over here how India is one of the countries where the risk is very, very high. So, this was done by the, this survey was done by the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation in Seattle and they found that exposure to high air pollution levels are present in these countries as shown over here. Now, these are the effects that the air pollution can have on human health. But let's see what effect it has on vegetation, on plants. So, on the plants, one of the common things that has been seen is that when plants are exposed to air pollutants for a very long period of time, the air pollutants enter through the stomata and cause chlorosis. Chlorosis is yellowing of the leaves, which is shown over here. And it also affects photosynthesis because the pigments are being broken down. When photosynthesis is being affected, it leads to necrosis or the death of the leaf tissue, like shown over here. It has known to, the air pollutants have been known to cause erosion of the cuticle of the leaf. So, it the cuticle is required so that excessive water loss doesn't happen and physical damage doesn't happen. But because the cuticle itself is getting destroyed, it leads to damage to the leaf structure and that is what is called as necrosis or death of the leaves. It has been shown to cause epinasty or downward curling of leaves as shown over here. And finally, abscission or dropping of the leaves. So these are the effects that air pollutants have on vegetation. Now when we see the impact of air pollutants on the environment, there are mainly four impacts. The first one is smog. Smog is formed when there is a mixture of fog and smoke. And smog is something that is very common in some cities in the world. For example, in Delhi, in India, it's very, very common. The first picture is of Delhi. Or in Los Angeles, in California, again, it is very common there. Or certain other cities, like in Egypt, it has been seen. Or in Greece, in Athens, in Greece, it is seen. Or Shanghai, in China, what I showed you earlier. In all of these places, smog is very common. And it mainly happens because in the presence of sunlight, nitrogen oxides and volatile organic compounds get converted into ozone and other airborne particles which do not escape out into the atmosphere. They are stuck over there leading to this fog kind of thing and because these particles are very very dangerous to our system, smog on the whole is an extreme impact of environmental or air pollution specifically. Acid rain is another impact wherein there is rain or precipitation that contains very high levels of nitric acid and sulfuric acids. That is because the sulfur dioxide or nitrogen oxide which is present in the atmosphere combines with water and oxygen to form these nitric and sulfuric acids which come down to the earth in the form of acid rain. So the acid rain is having a very low pH. Regular rain water that comes down is slightly acidic. Maybe it has a pH of 5.6 or it could be neutral. 
but acid brain can have a low ph of 4.2 or 4.4 some cases it has been even reported to be as low as 3 in such a case when acid falls on the plants or when it falls on the marbles when it falls on you know different structures it causes corrosion it has a very strong corrosive action on the human uh, skin on the vegetation on the animal skin as well as on the building materials so acid rain is yet another impact of air pollution the third impact is global warming which mainly happens due to the greenhouse effect increased greenhouse effect now greenhouse effect is something that is normally present to keep the temperature of the earth warm but when there is an excess of greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide or methane or water vapor in the atmosphere they tend to absorb more heat and retain more heat that leads to an increase in the temperature of earth now when there is an increase in temperature of earth automatically it causes climate change so global warming is the root to climate change or you can say that the main driver of climate change is global warming but uh, the climate change is a mixture of or it is made up of several different parameters several different shifts that are happening several changes that are happening so these changes include the melting of ice sheets so the glaciers start retreating there could be changes in the precipitation patterns there is extreme weather events too much of drought too much rain in some areas flooding in other areas rain storms hurricanes heat waves all of these are extreme weather events triggered by global global warming when there is a melting of ice sheets slowly the, there is shrinking of habitats eventually we start losing biodiversity plants and animals we keep losing now also we have seen many species of you know birds migratory birds and insects are arriving days or weeks earlier than they did in the last century and that is because their habitats are slowly dying out so these are all of these together is what we call as climate change climate change is essentially a long term shift in the temperatures and weather patterns and climate change occurs mainly due to global warming why does global warming occur due to the air pollution so the fourth environmental impact of climate of air pollution is ozone depletion this is again something that we would have heard of ozone depletion is uh, an impact that has been controlled to an extent so in the stratosphere we have a thick layer of ozone that absorbs the harmful uv radiations and this layer is very very important to ensure that whatever is on the earth is safe from the action of uv but it had been seen in the 1980s and 1970s that chlorofluorocarbons abbreviated as cfcs were acting on the ozone so they were combining with the ozone and converting the ozone to oxygen now when the ozone gets converted to oxygen oxygen cannot absorb the uv rays so the uv rays would come right through and it was observed that there was thinning of the ozone layer over antarctica it had been observed it had been seen that there is a thinning which means ozone is being rapidly broken down by the chlorofluorocarbons to make sure that this did not continue to make sure that we were able to control the ozone depletion there was a very very successful pact that was signed which is known as the montreal protocol and after the montreal protocol was you know uh, uh, brought into effect over the world i mean worldwide we have been able to completely ban or completely remove or stop using or phase out the production and usage of cfc so that has definitely brought the health of the ozone layer and it has you know made it much better so this was one of the fourth impact environmental impact of air pollution that is ozone depletion now looking now looking at the control measures so control of air pollution it can be mainly done by having environmental impact assessment environmental impact assessment is wherein before any project is sanctioned or approved an industrial project or a mining project we need to make sure that there is an impact assessment that is being done and then that is being implemented accurately so eia or environmental impact assessment is very essential for any upcoming projects we need to shift to cleaner energy sources that is the way forward we cannot depend on fossil fuels anymore because they are non renewable we have to take up cleaner energy sources which will again cut down the air pollution when we use coal for burning we need to use a version of coal which is having low sulfur now the indian coal thankfully is a low sulfur coal but in many countries the coal that is being used has very high sulfur and when that is burnt more of sulfur dioxide is getting released into the environment afforestation this is a big savior in terms of controlling air pollution if we plant more trees the trees are able to absorb the pollutants ensure that the greenhouse gases don't go up and they are able to control the global warming as well 
we need to control strictly control the industrial emissions so there can be cyclone separators installed or electrostatic precipitators installed some kind of uh, checks and measures to make sure that pollution vehicular pollution is also controlled and the um, industrial emissions are also being controlled so strict measures need to be taken in this regard these measures are there we do have the air prevention and control of pollution act in india but then we need to make sure that these measures are actually implemented without giving any kind of relaxation so these were the different causes effects and control of air pollution if you want to know more about each of the environmental impacts i'll be doing videos on that as well you can refer those i hope these this video was used and i really hope to see you all in the next one as well thank you